Well, hello, and welcome to episode 22 of Let's Translate Light Novels. You know the drill by now, check the video description for more info, and let's get into it. Haha wa ouetsu o kamikoroshi nagara, shibaraku musuko o dakishimete ita ga. That's first part of the sentence. Omoi tsumeta you ni shounen no karada wo jibun kara hanasu to kou kiita. So, uh, the mother. Oetsu is uh, sobbing, weeping, like audibly. If you look at the kanji, there's like the mouth radical in both of those kanji. That kind of clues you in. Uh, kami koroshi nagara. So nagara is that suffix, that auxiliary verb that means while doing this verb. Uh, kami korosu uh, is like to to stifle, to like to kill. <laughs> uh, basically like stifling her sobbing. While stifling her sobbing, uh, shibaraku musuko o dakishimete ita. Uh, she, for a while, she uh, held her son. Ga, in this case, the ga is but. It's preceded by a comma. Omoitsumeta uh, yoni. So omoi, like that kanji means to think, but omoitsumeta uh, is more like this thought consumed her suddenly, or like this thought tortured her suddenly, or something kind of more like that vibe. Like it obsessed yoni, <laughs> uh, uh, as if. She was obsessed, uh, as if a sudden thought possessed her. Shonen no karada wo. So again, this like using the boy's body. Uh, if we say the boy's body in English, it sort of evokes imagery of a corpse. <laughs> so sh just ignore the karada part in English, not the boy's body, but just the boy uh, or Ayuru, her son. Jibun kara hanasu. So um, separated him from her, pushed him away from her. Ko uh, kita. Ko is like like this. Uh, and then Kita asked, and asked uh, a question like this, or asked in this way, or asked this question. So patron A translated that as, choking back sobs, that's a great, see, look how clean that is, like, oetsu wo kami koroshi nagara, it's qu pretty long in Japanese, but choking back sobs, that's exactly what it means in English. Matuta hugged her son for a few moments, uh, but pulled away from him as if in thought. As if in thought mm, is kind of weird, pulled away with, from him as if in thought. We'll see how the other uh, patron and small Sarah translated that, but as if in thought is not quite uh, the best way of expressing uh, yoni. Again, it's it's not like she, she was thinking, just sort of pondering it. It was more like this sudden thought just like hit her and now she feels kind of anxious about it or now she feels kind of desperate about it or urgent about it. Patron B, she held him to her chest for a while, managing barely to choke back sobs, when suddenly, as if realizing something, she held the boy out at arm's length. Yeah, that's, it, it's still worded a little strange, this as if realizing something is, is a little odd, uh, but it, it is what, what it is in Japanese. It, it, it's this sort of feeling, like suddenly she thinks of something, like, oh my god, like I have this sudden thought, and then I push my son away. Uh, and then she's about to ask him a question. You'll kind of see with the next line, the emotionality that's going into this, like why she's suddenly pushing him away. Like this next line really clues you into that. And note how patrons A and B flipped the order of the first half of the sentence. Patron A did the choking back sobs first, and then Matuta hugged her son for a few moments, and then patron B flipped that. She held him to her chest for a while, managing barely to choke back sobs. But you know, it's the same thing, it just, it, it does give you a different uh, feeling depending on which part of this sentence you express first. And then small Sarah translated that as well, suppressing her sobbing. <laughs> yeah, so I've mentioned a few times in this series, but nangara you don't always, in fact, you usually don't want to translate it as wow, like while doing a verb, while suppressing her sobbing. I don't know, it sounds too procedural. You know, it's like you're reading a cookbook. While the duck simmers, make the pasta. <laughs> it, it's, yeah, it just... It, it doesn't sound very good <laughs> while suppressing her sobbing. Like, it's technically correct. It just sounds weird. Uh, the mother held her... The mother held her son tightly. Yeah, just this the mother for haha. -ha, it's technically correct again, but it's just... It sounds a little weird in English to just call her the mother. We know it's Matuta. Like, calling her the mother there uh, reinforces the, the familial bond between them, but you already have the word her son uh, in there, which would do that just fine. Uh, the mother just sounds stilted. But then, comma, she suddenly pulled him a little bit away from herself and said, comma, and then we're going to have the quote. I liked, uh, but then she suddenly pulled him a little bit away from herself. Small Sarah just cut out the whole, like, omui tsumeta yoni, 
well, she didn't cut it out. She just sort of reinterpreted that as like she suddenly pulled him away Inst instead of like what it was in the Japanese. She suddenly pulled him away because she had this sudden like epiphany or this sudden realization that that pressed her to ask a question or whatever. But uh, yeah, that paints a good picture. I, you can imagine what's happening. All right, the next sentence. So this is the this is actually a pretty significant line here. And, and it explains, it informs why uh, she was holding him, sobbing him, and then suddenly pushed him away. So she says, Ayuru, omae wa hinzoku toshite no hokori o motte shinu koto ga dekiru? And then he responds after a pause, kaasama. So this is relatively simple Japanese here, actually. Hinzoku uh, toshite, so that's as a member of the hinzoku, the hin clan. Hokori o motte, like with pride or or like holding pride <laughs> like possessing pride that's like literally what it means like but with pride basically uh shinu koto ga dekiru so shinu koto ga dekiru uh without the question mark means like uh can die i i have the ability to die uh but she's asking it as a question it's like can you die uh you know with like while embracing the pride of being a uh, heen. So it's sort of more like in English, we would express this sentiment as like, could you die in the name of uh, the heen? It's that sort of thing. It's like, would you also, I think is probably a little more how we would express that in English. Like, would you die uh, for uh, the pride of the heen? Or would you would you die for the glory of the heen? Or it, it's it's something like that. It's like would you be willing to die for you know our honor for the honor of the heen? It's that sort of feeling. And yeah, this is a pretty pretty heavy question, especially to ask a a, a boy. Uh, so let's see how the patrons in Small Sarah translated that. Patron A, Ayuru, are you willing to lay down your life as a member of our clan? And then he responds, mother. I like that. Yeah. As you could tell when I was sort of wording a translation in real time, it it's one of those things that sounds pretty weird if you translate it literally. If you keep like, with pride, keeping pride, holding pride. Yeah, it, it really is this sentiment though. Are you willing, uh, would you, not necessarily could you, but would you, are you willing to lay down your life as a member of our clan? And yeah, as a member of our clan, instead of like, as a member of our clan with pride. <laughs> it's more like proudly. Yeah, th this is a good translation. Patron B, Ayuru, are you, are you prepared to die to preserve your honor as a member of the Heen? Mother, preserve your honor. That, that actually works okay too. Although I think it's not as straightforward or as emotionally hard hitting as just, are you willing to lay down your life as a member of our clan? Uh, or die in the name of, of the Heen, I think is a little more the vibe here. Preserve your honor as a member of the Heen. I don't know if it's necessarily preserve your honor. It's it's a pretty hard sentence to translate, if I'm being perfectly honest. Like, it's an easy sentence to understand, but a harder sentence to translate. I like the uh, are you dot dot dot, are you <laughs> prepared? I like the, you know, it's like... It implies she's about to ask the question, like she's hugging him and sobbing, and then she pushes him back because she suddenly, she's like, we're probably going to die, Ayuru. Like, are you, if, if shit goes down, are you willing to lay down your life? That's kind of the thought that she's thinking here. Even though, you know, the Heen rejects you, uh, are you still willing to die for them uh, or for their honor? I, I like using honor uh, as Hokori in this case. That does work very, very well. So there's some good things in here, but the preserve your honor as a member of the Heen is a little a little wordy and a little roundabout. I think something a little more direct, like willing to lay down your life is better. Uh, and then small Sarah, Ayuru, are you willing to die in the name of the Heen race? <laughs> so aside from race, this is a good translation, I think. It's very direct and to the point. Uh, and then die in the name of, I, I really like. It, it's it's a turn of phrase that we that we definitely use in English. And yeah, they're not really a race, they're a, they're a clan, they're a tribe. All right, the next sentence. Shounen wa shibashi haha no kao wo mitsumete ita ga yagate chisaku unazuita. And then next sentence, I'm keeping these together. Sore wo mita haha no hitomi kara hitosuji no namida ga nagare, soshite kanojo wa kuchibiru wo furuase nagara kubi wo furi hajimeta. All right, so 
Shun and the boy. Shibashi haha no kao mitsumete ita ga. He stared at her face, <laughs> literally, for a while. Side note. Uh, in Japanese, whenever the, the word cowl comes up, like face, like he looked at her face. She had a sad look on her face. Often I'll just translate that as eyes. Like he looked into her eyes or she had a sad look in her eyes. Like that tends to sound a little more natural in English than face. Sometimes face works, uh, but sometimes it just sounds weird if you keep it as face. <laughs> so even though cowl is literally in there, I think of it as more as eyes. So he looked into his mother's eyes for a while. Uh, and then eventually in time, uh, he nodded chi saku again. He nodded smallly. <laughs> this has come up in many of the videos in this series. Uh, he gave a little nod. He nodded meekly. He nodded quietly. Some other adverb uh, because smallly <laughs> isn't really a, a, an adverb that we would use in English. Um, sore o mita. So sore in this case is uh, it's referring to him nodding at her. Uh, chi saku. So, sore o mita, so, uh, sore o mita haha, so the mother who saw him nodding meekly. That's kind of why I wanted to keep these two sentences together, because they flow like that. So, um, no hitomi kara, so from her eyes, hito suji no namida, a, a single tear droplet, uh, ga nagare, flowed, uh, and so shite, and then, uh, kanajo wa kuchibiru wo furuase nagara, so again, this nagara, well, <laughs> making her lips shiver is literally what this means in English, uh, but, you know, her lips quivering, her lips shaking, uh, kubi wo furi hajimeta, so this hajimeta auxiliary verb, it means began to do the verb, so she began to shake her head. I've been told in, in English creative writing classes throughout my life that like it's always weak to to say that a character began to do something or begins to do something. Uh, and yes, sometimes that can be weak. Uh, so just be careful and mindful uh, if you ever see hajimeta as an auxiliary ver verb in Japanese because it works better in Japanese than it does in English to say that a character began to do something. Okay, patron A. Ayuru stared at his mother's face for a few seconds, then gave a small nod. Seeing her son's resolution broke her, a single tear rolled down her cheek and her lips trembled as if more were about to spill over. I really like seeing her son's resolution broke her. This may look like it was completely added in there uh, by the translator just for funsies, but um, her son's resolution is sore, like this sore. It, it, it's describing what he had just done. She asked him, hey, are you willing to die in the name of our... I wouldn't be willing to die, <laughs> honestly, like in the name of a, of a tribe who shunned me and, and stuff. Like, and if I'm a kid, like, hell no, I'm out of here. <laughs> but Ayurdu was like, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to die um, for my clan. And um, it's resolution uh, that, uh, that he's willing to die. So seeing her son's resolution, sore o mita, that's what that is. And then broke her, I really like, because it did, it broke her. Like, her lips are, are shaking, Her she's crying. Um, she was, like, stifling her sobbing earlier. Now she's just like, it broke her. Like, now she's, the, the waterworks are, the floodgates are open. And her lips trembled as if more were about to spill over. So this as if more were about to spill over was completely added. Like, it's implied, but it was completely added. And then we're missing the, um began to shake her head, and it does not show up in future sentences, so the patron did not move it to uh, different sentences. And I think this is important, actually, that, that she shook her head. She asks him, are you willing to die? He says yes, and then she gets overcome with emotion, and she's like, yeah, you shouldn't have to do that. <laughs> That's what this, like, she began to shake her head is. So I think it, it is missing that, and it does need that, but otherwise I really like this translation. Patron B, the boy scrutinized his mother's face a moment, but finally responded with a small nod. I kind of like that. Scrutinized is interesting for, like, looked at. It's a, it's a more specific way of saying looked at. It's implying that he's, like, trying, he's, like, searching for something in her eyes, like, what did she mean by this question? How am I supposed to answer this question? Yeah, it, it works really nicely. With that, a single tear slid down her cheek. Uh, so yeah, sore, in this case, patron B is translating sore as with that. That's a little more literal, but it also works. A single tear slid down her cheek, and and though her lips trembled, she began to shake her head. Yeah, this, this has everything in there still, and it works pretty well. 
though her lips trembled. Yeah, this, <laughs> this brings up another good way that you can translate nagara. Uh, especially if it's nagara mo. Like, nagara mo definitely means even though, or and though, or well, um, in, a, in a sort of A, but B sort of, sort of sentence structure. So yeah, though her lips trembled, uh, she began to shake her head. Uh, the though is actually a pretty good way of translating nagara as well. Even though, like, a part of her feels really proud um, to have raised such a very, like, loyal kind of son, at the same time, she shakes her head. She's like, no, you shouldn't die for our clan. <laughs> uh, so I really like that contrast there. Uh, small Sarah. The boy looked at his mother's face. We all translated it as face. And again, it's not, it's not always automatically wrong, like, to translate uh, kao as face in this kind of context. I just want to plant the seed <laughs> that uh, you don't always have to translate it as face and that sometimes eyes work a lot better. The boy looked at his mother's face and eventually it began to shake. Nope, that's wrong. <laughs> that implies that his mother's face began to shake. I mean, it kind of does, but it's, it's more the boy nodded his head like, yes, I would be willing to die. So small Sarah totally missed that. He, he was nodding in the affirmative. Yes, I'm willing to die. He saw a tear fall down his mother's face, and then with shivering lips, she began to shake her head. I kind of like that part. He saw a tear fall down his mother's face. is kind of weird. I think small Sarah me mixed up sore o mita haha no hitomi kara. I think small Sarah thought the sore o mita was referencing um, Ayudu. Ayudu was seeing this thing, but no, it was the mother who was seeing the things. Uh, but yeah, I like, and then with shivering lips, she began to shake her head. That's fine. But yeah, the small Sarah completely like missed the whole first part where he's like, yes, I'm willing to die. <laughs> and she's like, oh, you're so sweet. But no, you shouldn't be willing to die. That, that, that's dumb. Okay, next line. Gomen ne, kaasama, doushitaro omae wo shiawase ni shite yaru koto ga dekiru no ka. Mou wakaru naku natte shimatta. No. So there's a lot of ellipses in here. That's just showing, it's basically showing that she's kind of having a hard time speaking, stumbling over her words, and it's probably because she's crying. Uh, you know how when you cry, you kind of, <laughs> and you like pause and can't speak cleanly. Okay, so, gomenne, I'm sorry. Doushitara omae wo shiawase ni shite yoru koto ga dekiru no ka? So, um, this is one of those things where like, you're spending the first half of the sentence asking a question, and then she's spending the second half of the sentence saying that she doesn't know the answer to that question. So translated literally into English, it's more like, uh, what what can I do to uh, make you happy or to um, give you a happy life? Shiawase ni suru is more like a, an idiom, like to, to give you a good life, basically. It's not like to make you happy. I mean, it is to make you happy, but like to, to give you a good life. Uh, that sort of feeling to it. It's more like over the long term. So like the first half is, what do I have to do to give you a good life? I don't know the answer to that. But in better English, it's like, I just don't know anymore, like how I, I can possibly give you a good life. Uh, again, the shimatta verb, uh, auxiliary verb at the end is, is sort of implying like it's unfortunate. It's a bad thing that I don't know how to make you happy. But also like, I, I maybe used to know or used to think that I that I could make you happy, but now um, that that ship has sailed. Like I I don't think I can make you happy anymore. Like I don't know how. I don't I don't see a future anymore where where you and me can be happy, or like where we can be happy, where you can be happy. It's true. <laughs> They're pretty much in dire straits here. All right, patron A, forgive me, Matuta said. I just don't know how I can make you happy anymore. Yeah, this is fine. It's it's slightly missing the nuance of like, give you a good life versus just make you happy. Make you happy doesn't have as much, um, the stakes are a lot lower, I think. Yeah, it's more like, not, not a temporary emotion, like making him happy, but like making the, his state of being happy. Uh, otherwise, it's fine. I like forgive me instead of uh, sorry. Uh, oftentimes, that's another thing. Um, it's it's good to translate "I'm sorry" as "forgive me." Uh, in this case, not necessarily. I just I'm just pointing out that "forgive me" is a good way sometimes to translate "I'm sorry." Uh, patron B, I'm sorry, Ayuru. I'm your mother, but 
I just, I don't know what I can do, what more I can do to preserve your happiness. Preserve your happiness is, it's a little odd of a turn of phrase, but it does get more at the heart of, of what it really means, shiawase ni uh, suru. Uh, you know, preserve your happiness to to make sure that you still have a happy life after all the all the stuff that's gone down. And I like the I'm your mother, but uh, she's using Kasama here as a first person like pronoun, like her pronoun, her personal pronoun to describe herself. Uh, Japanese people do this a lot, like especially Japanese parents, they'll call themselves. I mean, we sort of do this in English as well. We'll, we'll call ourselves mom and dad to our kids when we're talking to them. But I, I kind of like expanding this pronoun to I'm your mother, but I just don't know what I can do uh, anymore to preserve your happiness. Maybe cut this down a little bit. It's a little wordy. So it's it's losing a little bit of its emotional impact because it's it's a little wordy. Uh, small Sarah. I'm sorry. I just don't know how I can make you happy. <laughs> I don't know what to do anymore. I like, I don't know what to do anymore. I'm, I'm sorry. I just don't know how I can make you happy. That almost sounds like, I don't know, snarky or bitter or something. It's like, well, I tried to make you happy, I do, but you're just so picky. It's like, no one's going to satisfy you. <laughs> yeah, the tone sounds a little weird here, but I like, I don't know what to do anymore. Uh, that's great, actually. <laughs> And it, it needed some ellipses in here just to show that she's having a hard time saying this. Okay, next line. This is Ayuru speaking. Boku wa kaasama ga itte kureru dake de shiawase da yo. Musuko no kotae ni matuto wa kao wo ootte susuri nakidashita. So, kaasama ga itte kureru. So, i, iru is to, to be or to stay. Ite kureru, uh, that kureru auxiliary verb means like you're doing this verb for me, for my sake, uh, for my benefit. So uh, just having you with me, uh, mom, um, makes me happy. Like, you're all the happiness I need, mom. Um, you complete me. <laughs> like, but yeah, it's like, I don't need anything else uh, to make me happy but you, mom. It's that kind of feeling. Musuko um, no kotae, uh, her son's answer, ni. Uh, Matuta wa kao ootte, uh, covered her face and susuri nakidashita and like just started sobbing. <laughs> it's just like, first first her son said, yes, I'm willing to die for our clan. And then, then he said like, oh, you, you, you are what makes me happy, mom. You're all I need to be happy. And then she just loses it. <laughs> She's like, ah, <laughs> why is my son so sweet? <laughs> I can't. All right, uh, patron A. I'm just happy that you're here with me, mother, Ayuda replied. At this, Matuta burst into tears, her face buried in her hands. I like at this, Matuta burst into tears, her face buried in her hands. That's a great wor working of that. I'm just happy that you're here with me, mother. <laughs> it's it's more than that, though. Uh, it's like the, the wording here implies it's in the moment uh, instead of like, I have you in my life. Uh, we're talking sort of about... Um, happiness for life here. We're not talking necessarily about happiness in this moment or, you know, happiness this week <laughs> or whatever. Uh, but it, it's still a pretty good translation. Uh, patron B, as long as you're with me, mother, that's all I need to be happy. Yes, this, this is exactly the vibe. Um, that's all I need to be happy, like you being with me. At that, Matuta covered her face and broke into sobs. Broke into sobs is a little weird to me. I don't think it's weird, weird, like just weird to me. Uh, small Sarah, I am happy, mother, because you're with me. <laughs> when her son said this, Matuta covered her face in her hands and wept. I like when her son said this, Matuta covered her face in her hands and wept. Although when her son said this, you don't really need that. I am happy, mother, because you're with me. You know, I suppose that works okay. Like, I am happy does describe not necessarily his feelings in the moment, but his state of being. But again, this shiawase, it's, it's not it's a little more abstract than just the emotion of happiness. It's more like having a good life. It's more having a content life. There's a lot more to shiawase. It's a lot heavier than just happiness as a, as a vague emotion that you may feel and it's fleeting and then you feel some other emotion. It's like, no, shiawase is this like overall uh, comfort and contentedness and happiness in your life. Japanese, next line. 
そんな母の背をさすりながらアユルは迷いに迷った末こう切り出した。母様一つだけ聞いてもいいそんな母。So earlier we had、um, それを見た。And that それ was referencing the action that the、uh, other character took in the last, in the preceding sentence. So in this case it's doing the same thing. そんな母。The mother who Uh, covered her face in her hands and was sobbing. That's what this sonna is, is doing. Haha no se wo sasuri nagara. So, like、uh, rubbing, caressing his mother's back as she sobbed, basically. Ayuri wa mayoi ni mayotta sue. So, after、uh, hesitating a while, <laughs> like, you know, it's like he's like kind of hesitating. Should I say it? Shouldn't I? Should I say it? Shouldn't I?、Uh, but sue, like at the end of, of all of this. Hesitation, he finally, cool,、uh, like this, kiridashita, like he just blurted out、um, this, this question.、Uh, Kasama, hitotsu dake kiite mui, can I, can I ask you just one question? And notice lots of ellipses because he's sort of like, this is a hard question that I'm about to ask.、Uh, and I've been wanting to ask it. Mayoi ni mayot da sue. It's like he, he's been wanting to, but he's been hesitating to ask this question. And he's finally asking this question. He's like, can I ask you this question? Okay, patron A. Ayuru began to rub her back gently. After some hesitation, he decided to get to、eh, he decided to get answer. <laughs> That was a little mistake there. To a question he wondered about all his life. Mother, can I ask you something? So, this get the answer to a question he wondered about all his life. This is an extrapolation, but it's a fair one、uh, because it is what he's about to ask her about. <laughs> Spoilers! <laughs> But I mean, you don't need to spell out that he decided to get an answer to a question he wondered about all his life, even though that is what he's doing. You don't need to quite spell that out just yet. I think it helps、uh, if it's revealed after. So while it's, it's not entirely wrong to add that in there, like because it is technically what he's doing, I think it spoils、uh, the surprise later. Well, the surprise that happens like in the very next line, but still, I think it, it adds a little more suspense if you leave that out. Patron B. Ayuru rubbed his weeping mother's back and tried desperately to think of what to say. At long last, I like at long last for Mayoi ni Mayota Sue,、uh, he came up with Mother, can I ask just one thing? I like that. This is a good wording of everything. Try desperately to think of what to say.、Uh, Mayoi ni Mayota Sue, <laughs> kou kiri dashita.、Uh, at long last, he came up with I like that.、Uh, small Sarah. Well, gently, <laughs> wow! Well, gently stroking his mother's back, Ayuru, as if he couldn't stand being lost anymore, <laughs> blurted out, Mother, can I ask you just one question? Couldn't stand being lost anymore. No, that's not, that's not right.、Um, Mayowu ma is to be lost, but it's more like to, to falter, like, yeah, to be at a loss for what to say. Uh, or, or for what to do. It's not like literally like being lost. As if you couldn't stand, as if you couldn't stand? Yeah, that, that no. <laughs> I mean, it's not terribly, terribly wrong.、Uh, I like blurted out. That, that's great. <laughs> The blurted out part is, is great. And、uh, mother, can I ask you just one question? If, if Small Sir had added like an ellipses in there just to show that he's sort of like stumbling over his words and being hesitant,、uh, that would be better. Okay, you know, not, not too bad. Japanese. Haha wa sugu ni kotaeta. Tousama no koto ne. The mother responded or answered immediately. Tousama no koto. It's about your father, isn't it?、Uh, so, patron A. Matuta gave a quick reply. It's about your father, isn't it? <laughs> See, th- this is kind of the reveal. Like, Ayuru, he's probably like. You know, kind of hinted at, or maybe dropped hints or asked about his father all throughout his life. And Matute's probably always been a bit vague about it.、Uh, it. It's a very touchy subject between these two. Like, who is my father? So she could tell from the previous sentence when he's just like, Mom, can I ask you just one question? <laughs> like, she can tell, she knows what it is. So that, that's kind of why. I question the choice、uh, that Patron A made earlier to add in there that he decided to, to get an answer to a question he wondered about all his life. Even though that is what he's doing, it, I don't know, I think it, it just has a little more impact if you leave that part out and say, Mother, like, and cautiously, can I ask you something? And then she immediately re- replies, It's about your father, isn't it?、Uh, I just think that flows better that way. 
uh, the patron bee, he barely had to wait for an answer. It's about your father, isn't it? I kind of like he barely had to wait for an answer. It's a, it's a reworking of his mother answered immediately. It's putting the focus a little more on Ayuru, which is, which is good. Because we're kind of in Ayuru's uh, shoes as well at this point. Uh, his mom knows who his father is, obviously. Uh, we as readers now are kind of getting a clue of, of who his father is. He's a guy with dark hair, so he's not Heen. And that would explain why their clan uh, hates him and his mother. That, that would explain why she was an outcast, because she uh, had a baby with someone who's not uh, from the Heen, which is like a huge taboo <laughs> to their clan. And he, he probably, Ayudu probably suspects this as well, but he doesn't quite know. And as readers, we don't quite know the details of this either. That, like, that's kind of what this book is about. We will find out later in the rest of this book exactly who his father is. But so fra framing it from Ayudu's perspective here, he barely had to wait for an answer. It's about your father, isn't it? Uh, that's nice because that puts us more in Ayudu's shoes because we are in Ayudu's shoes at this point. We don't really know who his father is. I mean, I do personally because I read the rest of the book, but uh, yeah, he doesn't know. And as a new reader, you wouldn't quite know either. A patron, not patron, small Sarah, his mother answered right away. It's about your father, right? It's about your father, right? That I don't know, that sounds a little too modern, I think. Isn't it is better. Okay, next line. Odoroita ayuru ga seo sasuru te o tomeru. Matuta wa ayuru o jibun no shoumen ni mukaseru to kouitta. So, odoroita ayuru, the surprised ayuru ga seo sasuru te. So the the hand that that's rubbing his mom's back, wo tomeru, he stops. Uh, or stopped the hand that was rubbing his mom's back. In surprise. Matuta wa ayuru no, ayuru wo jibun no shoumen. So her her front, like the the front side of her basically. O mukaseru. So she she made ayuru face. This is the causative form of of the verb mukaseru. So she she made him, she caused ayuru to face her directly head on. And then koita, and then she said this. Uh, let's see. That was a really literal bad translation, so let's see how we all did. <laughs> Patron A. Surprised, Ayudu stopped rubbing her back. Matuta faced him sternly. I kind of like sternly. N I don't know if sternly is exactly the right word to use. Maybe gravely or solemnly, because uh, sternly implies a little bit that she's angry. Uh, faced him. That's fine at changing the whole she, she made him face her <laughs> head on. Just faced him works fine as well. And then surprised Ayudu stopped rubbing her back. That's fine too. I like how concise and how tight this is. Look how nice and short this translation is. You don't always want to make your translations as short as possible, but sometimes it's nice. Like, I have a tendency, or I used to have this tendency, I, I got cured of it uh, after translating games for so long, where you have to make your translations as short and as tight as possible. Uh, but yeah, sometimes one can be overly wordy it's pretty easy to get overly wordy in translations, and uh, this is nice and tight. Patron B, Ayudu was so surprised, his hand stopped moving on his mother's back. Does that need a comma? This is why I'm not an editor. <laughs> uh, yeah, was so surprised, his hand stopped moving on his mother's back. Uh, Matuta reached out and faced him directly towards her. Ma Matuta reached out and faced him, maybe and turned him directly toward her? Faced him directly toward her, that works too. I think his hand stopped moving, like, out of surprise, or, like, surprised, Ayudu stopped rubbing her back, versus, this is an example of, like, this is a little wordier, Ayudu was so surprised, his hand stopped moving on his mother's back, versus surprised, Ayudu stopped rubbing her back. Like, they both say exactly the same thing, it's just, uh, one of them is wordier than the other, and the extra words are tripping me up right now in the moment. It could just be my current mood, uh, but, yeah, it seems a little unnecessarily wordy. A small Sarah Ayudu, surprised, stopped stroking his mother's back. That's a little too comma e. <laughs> it would be better if, if small Sarah had just done surprised, comma, like uh, Patron A had done. Ayudu stopped stroking his mother's back. Uh, Matuta, facing Ayudu, said this. Yeah, it's, it's more like if you're imagining the scene taking place, like she's sobbing, he's hugging her and caressing her back, and then, and then, um, I'm, I'm imagining it where she's like uprighting herself and kind of pushing him a little bit, like putting her hands on his shoulders and like, okay, face me, look at me, boy. I'm going to say something very important. 
uh, facing Ayuru, though, it's more like she does the facing him instead of like she physically makes sure that Ayuru is facing her because she has something important to say. Just note that the nuance is a little different there. Like, Patron B is the only one of us who actually did the, like, the mom is the one who is, like, grabbing him by the shoulders and, like, okay, listen. <laughs> Whereas Patron A and Small Sarah are more like, she just, like, faced him. Uh, let's see, her line. Ashita hanashimasu. Keigo, she's using keigo. <laughs> Sore wo kiitara ayuru. Omae wa jibun no michi wo jibun de kimenasai. And then he says, kaasama. So, Ashita hanashimasu. I will tell you tomorrow. And she's saying it in the polite form. That implies like, yeah, she's being respectful, but also keeping him at a bit of a distance here. And she's sort of, it's kind of like when you're, when you're a parent and you take on this very like formal, um, official tone with your children. Like when you're telling them, like, it's, it's, you're kind of letting them know who's boss. You're kind of putting them in their place. Not like in a condescending way. But like, I am your mother, <laughs> and I am I am an authority figure, and I, I will tell you tomorrow. It's that sort of feeling to it. Sore uh, kitara, when you hear it, when, when you hear what I have to say about your father, omae wa jibun no michi wo, so jibun no michi wo jibun de kimeru is a very cliche Japanese phrase. Based, it's literally, you choose your own path, um, you yourself. Like, don't let anyone else choose your own path for you. But yeah, like you will decide for yourself how you're going to live your life, basically. Or you're going to decide for yourself, um, you know, what, what path you're going to take from here. We use that cliche in English as well. Uh, we use that same metaphor. And it's like, you get to decide if you keep being in our clan or if you leave our clan is sort of the implication there. Okay, patron A, I will tell you tomorrow, but when you hear it, Ayuru, you must decide your own path going forward. I kind of like that. You must decide. Um, yeah, this kimenasai, the nasai ending of a verb, it's it's a command. Uh, it's it's a very common verb form used by parents to children. It's it's kind of you know clean your room tomorrow. <laughs> it's like that kind of like I'm your mother. You do as I say. Uh, you must decide your own path going forward. I like that your own path going forward. Uh, pa patron B, I'll tell you tomorrow. Once you know how you do, it will be up to you to decide your own path. I like that too. I like how both patron A and B did the, um, but when you hear it, comma, ayuru, comma, or once you know ayuru, once you know, comma, ayuru, comma. Adding the name in there, it, it, it is something that we kind of do if we want to add weight to things, if we want to if we really want to make sure this person is listening to what we're saying, like, we'll we'll add the person's name in there just to give it a little more weight. So I like that. I mean, it did it in Japanese as well with the commas, but I like that it was preserved in English. Small Sarah, I'll tell you tomorrow. And when you hear what I have to say, then please choose your own future. <laughs> yeah, please is weird. It's it's more a command. Please, please is very weird. And when you hear what I have to say, that's fine. It'll be more like, you must choose your own future would have worked a lot better than, then please <laughs> choose your own future. Choose your own future is fine. It's a, it's a interpretation of the metaphor of like choosing your own path. I think path is fine though, in this case. It's cliche, but it's good. All right, the last little section. Sa, kyo wa yukkuri o yasumi nasai. Matuta wa musuko no hitai ni sotto kuchizuke wo suru to shounen wo yoko tae sono ago no ue ni made yasashiku futon wo hiki agete yatta. All right, so, uh, sa, kyo wa yukkuri o yasumi nasai. So, uh, just sleep well tonight. <laughs> but it's like, you know, get some rest for tonight because tomorrow things are gonna get pretty uh, wild because I'm gonna tell you who your father is finally. Uh, but but for tonight, sleep sleep well, or rest up. Musuko no hitai forehead ni sotto kujizuke o suru. So softly, gently uh, planted a kiss on his forehead. Shunyan uh, wo the boy ayuru yokotae lay him on his side, and suno ago no ue ni made so all the way up uh, to just above his chin. Uh, futon wo hiki agete yatta. She raised the futon or the covers in this case, his comforter. Um, all the way above his chin. Patron A, get some good rest today, all right? With a kiss on his forehead, she laid her son down and pulled the futon cover gently up to his chin. 
I like that, and it's fine to keep futon in Japanese here since uh, this setting is sort of like a pseudo-feudal Japan. <laughs> I think it's fine to keep a uh, futon. I don't know though, like futon is, is a bit contentious because we do use the loan word futon in English and it means something completely different. Like a futon in English is one of those like fold out Ikea bed things. So uh, it, it's always a little, um, you always have to use your discretion when you when you keep futon as futon. I would have, I personally would have just used covers, but I don't think it's entirely wrong to use futon here again because the setting is sort of feudal Japan. Um, until patron B, until then get some rest. Matuta brushed her lips against her son's cheek in a soft kiss. Is that actually cheek? I always get so tripped up with this kanji if it's either forehead or cheek. It's forehead, okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's an honest mistake. I, I almost always, whenever I encounter either this kanji, uh, the kanji for brow, uh, and the kanji for cheek, like, I'll, I'll just look it up because I, I always mix these two up. But yeah, it's his, it's his brow, technically, not his cheek. Ooh, <laughs> like, not like it necessarily matters, but, uh, yeah. And tugged the blanket gently up to his chin. I like that. I also, like, brushed her lips against her son, like, in a soft kiss. I like that. It, it paints a very nice picture, uh, for sotto. Small Sarah, come now, let's rest up really good. <laughs> really good is kind of weird. I like come now, let's rest up. Like if small Sarah had just left off the really good or for for tonight, uh, that would be fine. But really good is a little weird here. <laughs> With a soft kiss on her son's forehead, I like that. Matuta lay her son down and covered him up to his chin. I like that. Covered him up to his chin with a blanket. <laughs> Might have been a little clearer. But I don't know. I don't know that it even necessarily needs blanket covered, covered him up to his chin. All right, that is the end of this e exciting edition of Let's Translate Light Novels. We only have four more episodes of this series left to go. And then I'm going to introduce a new series after that. So stay tuned. Thank you to all the patrons who support this and the other series on this channel and my other channel. And with a special thanks to my super patrons, Greg, Lay, Henry Roaming, and Data Fox.